It's Wake World! Wake World! Party time! Excellent! I've got an amazing cable access show. And I still know how to party. Over time, Wayne's World became this kind of soundbite caricature that attached itself to public access. <laughs> The real world of public access cable is that it was the most useful to people who are completely disenfranchised from getting on television or many parts of society. You don't think it have any influence on them? No, I don't. I don't believe no. it have any influence. I think church groups and community okay, groups on, could put together a TV show and get on television. This was a radical thing. I mean, this really empowered very ordinary, regular people with minimal training to be able to use the television back when television was very powerful and uh it was exciting to be a part of that so this week in joe's basement we're going to tackle a difficult and sensitive social issue namely race relations between blacks and whites anytime you see a black man on tv he's in handcuffs you know and anytime you see a white man on tv he does save somebody's life or something like that that's my opinion of black people yeah just they're fine okay of black people yes Okay, but I'm black myself, can't you tell? <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with the people by their color. <laughs> Yo, mama one. All right, we're asking your buddy here what he thinks about black folks, and we're going to ask you the same thing. Don't like them. <laughs> hey, you don't like them. <laughs> That's, you know, some people have different opinions. There are things um, that, that kids have just grown up with and have seen on TV and gathered from experience that may or may not be true, and they haven't had the opportunity to challenge them and confront them mm -hmm. with, with members of, of the race, who, you know, who those stereotypes are about. Public access has been hammered in regulatory realms, in closure of studios, in the funding. But it's no less necessary today than it was at the very beginning. And our mission drives us to think about who is speaking and who isn't. Who are the early adopters of media and who's being left behind? Sadly, Wayne's World can be used effectively to undermine the, the future and the stability of public access. It made the whole thing seem like a stupid navel-gazing activity. There was no point in listening to Wayne and Garth because they had nothing to say. And our bureau in Chicago this morning is the host of This Week in Joe's Basement. <laughs> Joe Winston, good morning, Joe. Wayne's world as a popular cultural phenomenon created this moment, brief moment in time where the media was suddenly fascinated by people who did public access cable for real. Joe, your show was kind of a, well, we have a clip of it, but just describe your show. And all they wanted to know was were we as stupid and lazy as Wayne and Garth. <laughs> we really kind of wanted to be taken seriously as artists. We wanted 25 years ago to be having the conversation that you and I are having now. The most absurd it got was when the Tribune hired me to interview Mike Myers. So when you're doing uh, Wayne, how central is the fact that he's doing a public access cable show to the character? For example, I'll tell you how it's central. So that the thing about Wayne's World is it's ten dollars trying to be ten million dollars, mm -hmm. and the the gulf between those realities is what's fun about it. It's interesting to poke fun at the insignificance of public and independent media in a commercial landscape. I think um, that representation on Wayne's World of public access as this big, locally popular thing is a romantic vision of public access. Public access subsisted on a politics of authenticity. People wanted to watch something on public access only if they thought it was real and connected to them. This is wild. I'm smoking a ball and I'm flipping to the channel and I've never seen anything like this on TV before. Yeah? How did you guys get on? How did we get on? What are you? What are you guys? I've never seen this before. Um, we're a regular show on, um, we're watching public access cable, I don't know if you knew that. Um, cause it sounded like, when anyway, you're watching public access cable and anybody can get on television and there's nothing that anybody can do about it. We tried to initiate two-way dialogue with viewers. Good evening, Joe's Basement, Joe speaking, you're on the air. 
Yeah, you do me a favor and say shmoo on the air. So somebody just calls in and just commands us to say shmoo. Like, that's the beginnings of Web 2.0. Okay. Shmoo. 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 The conversion of people from being consumers to creators Shmoo. of content, which Shmoo. continues to this day Shmoo. through social media and through Shmoo. YouTube. Shmoo. Public access has not received its just due as one of the first triggers to that horizon. Public access was very local. So if you aired in Minneapolis or Iowa City, you know, unless you mailed a tape to somebody, nobody outside your community was going to see what you did. So don't you want people to watch your show? <laughs> uh, that's sort of the deep question behind Joe's basement. YouTube is a much more efficient launching pad for recognition. Public access, <sighs> Jesus you know, you were pretty much doomed to labor on in obscurity. <laughs> it's cliche to say, but YouTube has democratized the production and distribution of television. YouTube and its ilk are kind of pure democracy, right? It's the, the shouting town hall meeting. Everybody's equal. Cultural appropriation is the adoption Paul of... Paul is writing to the people Why healthcare born. costs in the United States are so phenomenally, fascinatingly expensive. Obviously, Planned Parenthood is not but fucking selling in our baby sins, parts. You Christ died for us. Us. So on YouTube, there are so many different kinds of subcultures. I choose you. I would like to work with a little bit of fubu magic. So. Let's make this lunchbox. There's an entire community of HIV positive bloggers who talk you're, about. You're sitting there in a room full of people, and you're like, do they, do they think I have HIV? Do they have HIV? Are people what it's like to live through the disease, how so, what survival looks like. Um, then I also have another issue. But has, and you can see it in the comment section. The people who are watching are the people who also are HIV positive and are dealing with it in their own lives. And that content is really meaningful to, for them. So if I'm a pharmaceutical sponsor and I want someone to know about my HIV positive drug, that's a really good place to go because you know that people are directly connecting with the creator and you can see it right there. What's been refreshing about public access and a challenge in sustaining public access has been the non-commercial side of it. That you can detach content and speech from the need to have advertising support, which historically and by all analysis is going to ultimately affect that content. Will YouTube continue to present all of this work for free or will it come up with some system to limit the amount of producers on that site? And unlike in public access, that limiting will not be in the interest of the public but it will be framed in the interest of YouTube, um, which is a very specific corporation that is much more interested in data and revenue than it is about expanding cultural conversations and access to media, however much it says that. There's something great about no money. There's no debts there. And the process of cable access is extremely empowering because it's, you know, the first thing that goes at a revolution is the television station. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. The model that was established, which is that the industry that profits from the use of our public rights of way, needs to set aside something for the public.